So do you remember how in my last video I said if you enjoyed me looking up interesting last meals, I'd do a follow-up video where I look up interesting last words? Well, I lied straight to your face. I'm recording this video right after recording the previous video. Look, I'm, I'm wearing the same shirt and everything. I was planning on making this video regardless. It's almost as if on YouTube, when people ask you to like a video or subscribe or push it to a certain view count, they already have the next content planned regardless, and they're using it just to drive up engagement and analytics. No, no one would ever do that on this platform. All right, let's look at some fun last words. So there aren't as many fun, funny, wacky last words from death row inmates, but there are a lot of good last words throughout history, so I thought I'd lump them together. But if you're a hardline traditionalist with the lore that I've already set up, I'm going to start with the people who were on death row. And again, to reiterate this reminder, especially for people who didn't watch the first video, I am in no way making any political statements with this, nor am I commenting on any of the people or cases mentioned in this video. There is far too much context and in-depth knowledge about these people and their cases that I do not have time to cover within this video. Feel free to do your own research and go easy on me in the comments if I fuck something up. I'm just commenting on things that I find are goofy in this horrible spiraling realm of inevitable death. Let's reiterate what I said was one of my favorites from the previous video. Thomas J. Grasso was given a last meal of a big elaborate list of items. He asked for SpaghettiOs and instead was given spaghetti. And he let the entire world know of this injustice because his final words before lethal injection were, I did not get my SpaghettiOs, I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Well, a 30-year-old dumb boy on the internet making videos that are probably in poor taste knows of this, so I'd say mission accomplished, Grasso. Eileen Wuronos. Eileen Wuronos. Wuro I'm never going to say her name right. Talked about her in the previous video a bit. She apparently had a very troubled childhood and after given psychological evaluations was deemed a psychopath, which left her brains a bit scrambled. Her final words were, Yes, I would just like to say I'm sailing with the rock, and I'll be back, like Independence Day, with Jesus. June 6th, like the movie, big mothership and all. I'll be back, I'll be back. There is a lot to deconstruct here. When she says Independence Day, she's obviously referring to the big movie where the aliens come in and blow up the fucking White House, what with her specifying a big mothership and all. But then she says she'll be hanging out with Jesus. So is he going to be with the mothership with her? And why June 6th? I don't think that's a holiday. But most importantly, why is Dwayne The Rock Johnson with her? Are they friends? Were they ever friends? Have they ever met? Did The Rock ever give her a shout out in any of his films? Was there a secret end credit scene of The Scorpion King where The Rock says, Hey, big shout out to Eileen, okay? I specified The Scorpion King because this all happened back in 2002, back when The Rock was just a really lukewarm meat slab of an actor. Unlike what he is now, the highest paid in the world lukewarm mediocre meat slab of an actor. All right, let's lighten the mood a bit. We started a little dark. Here's two really good puns. George Apple was executed via electric chair in 1928, and his final words were, well, gentlemen, you are about to see a baked apple. Perhaps his crime partner in another life, James French, was executed in 1966, and his final words were, how's about this headline for tomorrow's paper? French fries. Gentlemen, you're about to see a baked apple. And then on the other side, hey, how's about this headline? French fries! And then like a maniacal fucking laughter as they start throwing batarangs and little jack-in-the-boxes at each other. I would watch this movie. Hollywood, get me the Apple and French buddy cop film. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see them solve the case of how do they come back to life. Before his execution in 1987, Jimmy Glass had the final words, I'd rather be fishing. With how boring fishing is, that might be the only time that statement has ever been applicable. George Ingalls' tale is a wacky classic case of wrong place, wrong time. Except George was at the right place the entire time. George was upset with his local government, so he joined an anarchist group called the International Working People's Association, which is pretty fucking ironic. They had a rally in 1886, which eventually turned violent and culminated in someone blowing up a police station. Ingalls alibi was rock solid, since he wasn't even at the rally. He was at home playing cards. The government did what they do best and bungled the whole thing up. 
arresting Engel and sentencing him to death. Engel's last words, confirming that this guy understood what he signed up for, were, Hurrah for anarchy! This is the happiest moment of my life. I think we could all learn something from Mr. Engel. He knew what he signed up for. We don't see that type of commitment and conviction these days. I think we need to... I am telling people to commit their lives to a wayward cause. Never mind, don't do that. Grover Cleveland Redding was a mentally unstable man in 1921. He thought he was a prince from God knows where and was on a mission to bring people back to the homeland. Unfortunately, that mission culminated in him getting some people killed in a riot. Before his hanging, his final words were, I have something to say, but not at this time. He was then hung to death. Still waiting. Uh, we're still waiting, Grover. We're still waiting. Wait, what time is it? Uh, yeah, we're still waiting. Not necessarily capital punishment with this one, but it certainly plays alongside the theme. You remember the Salem witch trials when, like, everyone was a witch? You could just point to a woman and go witchcraft, and she would just be killed the next day? That yeah, was pretty fucked up. You know what came out of it, though? Pretty fun quote by Sarah Good who was one of the most famous women executed for witchcraft at the time. I am no more a witch than you are a wizard, and if you take my life, God will give you blood to drink. Little did Sarah Good know that most of the town was populated by vampires. Donald Grant was given the death penalty in 2001, and his final words as he was being strapped down to receive the lethal injection were, Yo God, I got this. That man has been dead for over 20 years, and yet he still managed to terrify me, which leads me to believe, yeah, he's got it. All right, let's pick this up. Let's get to a higher note. Let's feel a bit happier. Let's fucking crank the smiles, because this, this is getting, this is so much darker than the food one. Fuck. Now we're just going to look at famous last words in general, whether or not they were executed for a crime. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can die regularly. It happens, I know. Joseph Wright was a linguist who edited the English dialect dictionary. His last word was dictionary. Can you imagine if you were a plumber and your last word was plumber? You were a YouTuber and your last word was YouTube? Oh God, maybe I should just kill myself now. George Orwell's last written words were, at 50, everyone has the face he deserves. He then died at age 46 meaning that George Orwell doesn't deserve a goddamn thing. Nostradamus, the guy who made tons and tons of predictions of varying degrees, said on his deathbed, tomorrow at sunrise, I shall no longer be here. And he was right. By that time tomorrow, he had passed away. But not before making another 4,862 predictions that didn't come true. Richard B. Mellon was the owner of a company called Alcoa, which makes aluminum and other shit. Doesn't matter. What does matter is that he and his brother Andrew had a game of tag that lasted over seven decades. Richard was on his deathbed, called over his brother, tagged him, said last tag, and then fucking died making him the greatest player of tag the world has ever seen. His brother Andrew had to seethe and scream and deal with the fact that he had to remain it for the next four years until he himself died. I gotta be honest, they could have had the best familial relationship, they could have been the best of friends, and in that moment, if I was him, I would have never forgiven him. I would have burned all ties, I would have scorned his name, and I would have tried to sink his inheritance into the fucking bay. Louis-Marie Therese de Saint-Maurice was, I don't know, I did a bunch of Googling, best I could find is she was kind of a higher up during the French Revolution, so things didn't turn out so good for her. Apparently, as she was laying dying, she farted real good, and her final words were, good, a woman who can fart is not dead, and then she fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Ace was a famous R&B singer in the 50s, and he killed himself with a pistol during a break at his concert. But not in, like, the sad way, in a goofy way. He was drinking a little bit, put the gun to his face, and said, Look, I'll show you, it's not loaded. It was loaded. James W. Rogers was sentenced to execution by firing squad. His final words were, I done told you my last request. Bring me a bulletproof vest. 
The man's thinking nine separate fucking degrees above this. That man is thinking 28 different steps ahead of us. That guy could be a chess master. Unfortunately, the guns that were pointed at him were chess masters because they exploded his fucking chest cavity wide open. Pete Pistol Marovich was an up and coming basketball player who collapsed during a pickup game. His last words were, I feel great. And then he promptly died. See, that's why I never compliment myself. I don't want to jinx it. Winston Churchill, the jolly, round, flabby leader of Britain during World War II, had the last words of, I'm bored with it all, which is probably a mistranslation, because knowing Winston Churchill, his last words were probably, I am bored with it all. Mo Berg was an old-timey baseball player from the 1930s, and his final words were, how did the Mets do today? Knowing the New York Mets, the news of the score that day is probably what killed him. Hello from the future. My camera shut off during this one, so I'm re-recording it. Either that or I've been recording these takes for so long that my hair has gotten fucked up and my shirt has given up. Roald Dahl, who's missing an N to have a normal name like Ronald, is the creator of well-loved film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Break Even Acid Trip James and the Giant Peach, and thing no human on Earth remembers, BFG. And he had a very comforting send-off. Surrounded by his family on his deathbed, his last words were, You know, I'm not frightened. It's just that I will miss you all so much. And then he peacefully drifted off into the long sleep. At least that's what everyone thought. Because then a nurse jabbed a needle in his arm, prompting him to shoot up in bed, scream, Ow! Fuck! And then die. Emily Dickinson, world-renowned beloved poet, had her final words as, I must go in, for the fog is rising. She was later found suffering for all eternity in Silent Hill. This could go on and on forever. There's tons of interesting quotes and millions of great poetic things that have been said. But it doesn't matter because I want to end on a certifiable badass fucking line from Cicero. He was an old Roman orator and politician and... Big important guy. I don't know how their fucking government worked back then. He did a lot of stuff. But his last words were, as we've all memorized from high school, Ego vero consisto, a sede vertrante et si hoc certim potis recte facerum in se severum. Before I translate, let me give you the story. The government was all flippy floppy and shit was getting real ham fisted down there in old Rome. So there were hits going out left and right. You remember Caesar? He was a little bit important. He got stabbed to fucking death. So someone put a hit out on Cicero, because why not? It was the style at the time. Cicero was hanging out with his pals, noticed he was about to be assassinated, decided, eh, fuck it. I'm done fighting. I don't care anymore. Moved away from his cohorts so no one else would get hurt, stuck his neck out so he could be decapitated easier, and and said that line that I just butchered, which translates to, I go no further, approach veteran soldier, and if you can at least do so much properly, sever this neck. In other words, look dude, I'm done, I get it, fucking kill me, but don't fuck it up. Badass.